Welcome back to my channel. It is now week two in my Zetbound journey, and I'm going to call this episode Spilling the Tea. So I'm going to sit here and just have some tea with everybody, and I'm going to go over some of the most asked questions <laughs> and comments and DMs that I got just in the past week. It has been kind of amazing how many people have had questions about this journey, are on the same journey, but just has not said anything to me about it. Uh, and then now we have things to talk about. So it was really interesting. I did not know that so many people who were following me on some of my social media were really into this. Um, I've kind of been against going into the whole GLP-1 se sector for a while. Um, just because I wasn't really sure about it, I wanted to give other people time to go through it, start seeing what some of the side effects were, start seeing what's going on. Um, one thing I am going to do today, just so that you guys know, and you can always look down below at the chapters along the bottom or down into the caption, there will be the timestamps that you can skip ahead to any section that you might be more interested in. Because I am going to be doing my second week injection today. And I also logged my weight today. So if you're only curious about watching how I'm injecting or wanting to skip straight ahead to how much weight I lost, then feel free to do that right down below. While we're also here, make sure that if you're not currently following me or subscribing, as they say on YouTube, make sure that you would tap that subscribe. And there's also now a bell not really sure, but I know that that notifies you every time I have a new video. So if you are following along in this week by week to help make your own decision on whether or not you want to do this, then you might want to smash that bell as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The most asked question that I got, so I'm going to address it first today, is how did you decide on Weight Watchers? <laughs> uh, and honestly, I'm going to be very honest with you all. I googled a lot of different things. I reviewed in my last video that I had gone through multiple of my own physicians who have been wanting to put me on things like this, but they, for some rhyme or reason, were not able to get the prior authorization or what they call a PA approved through the insurance. Now, I am someone that I hold my money very dearly and tightly to me because I want to spend it on what I want to spend it on. I don't want to spend it on, a, on medications that I'm taking. There's just certain things that I'm just kind of like, I'm not going to pay that for that. And a lot of people will argue with me because a lot of people will spend tons of money on this because they say it's for your overall health and you should spend your money on this instead. I'm just kind of one of those people that I'm just going to say, if the insurance is not going to cover it for me, then it's obviously not for me. Now that is my own opinion. That does not mean that it is yours. And that does not mean that your opinion is wrong and my opinion is right either. That's just how I am. So for me, I decided, you know what? I know Weight Watchers has been around for decades. I've done Weight Watchers before. Their old program for me did not really work. I covered that last week where the point system I was trying to figure out how I could like have junk food that I shouldn't really be having like half of a Big Mac and justify it in my points and then just eat fish and vegetables later. Now that was back when I was in my 20s. Now I will go and reiterate that before I started doing this, I have tried a keto diet where I lost 85 pounds and then all of a sudden it all started coming back without me changing anything that I was doing. So that's when it came a little alarming, like, hey, what is going on? Why is this happening? I went to carnivore diet where I was only eating basically meat, eggs, and salt with the occasional berries or nuts. And I mean occasional, like maybe once a week, I would have some berries or nuts because I would be so tired of just eating meat and eggs. While that did get a little bit off, I was not feeling my best. I had some of those keto flu type symptoms and I was having to drink a lot of water, a lot of like supplements in the water and it just, it for the weight loss, there really was not there. It was not worth it. So my doctors and I decided I should try vegan. If you guys have never tried vegan and you're not sure if you should, you might not want to. It is expensive to go vegan. I'm just going to tell you guys it's very expensive. It's a whole lot of like beans and lentils and, and rice and 
a whole lot of vegetables. And in all of that with the beans and lentils and vegetables, we realized that I have what is called SIBO, which is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And a lot of those vegetables and beans and lentils are what feeds that to just make me bloat even larger. And so my stomach was out to here. I looked like I was 10 months pregnant. It was not for me. Now I have kept the dairy free part of that vegan. So all of my cheeses, my milk, my yogurt, sour cream, cream cheese, everything that is to typically dairy is non-dairy for me at my house now. And I'm perfectly fine with it. I found some really great brands that in my opinion taste the best, but I, I mean, in my opinion, cheeses are each individual's own flavor palette. I will put up some of my favorites right over here so that you guys can see what those are if you are thinking about going dairy free or if you have been told that you have SIBO and you need to manage that, these are definitely my favorites. Um, I also have found that I can have a sourdough if it is gluten free. So I can still have bread, it just doesn't need to have like that yeast factor that, you know, makes the bread. It can be a sourdough that's gluten free and I don't have issues with that. That's my food marble that I use that I talked about last week. Um, I got that to blow into each time I was eating different foods so that I could figure out what foods I could and could not have, what was feeding this bacteria and what was not. But I digress. For Weight Watchers, it's been around for years. There's also really great factors about Weight Watchers. Number one, I booked, like I said, with the doctor to speak to someone at like 10 or 11 p.m. at night and I spoke to them at 10 a.m. the next day. I spent about an hour on the phone with my virtual doctor. It's not a nurse practitioner, it's not a PA, it is an, it's an MD who specializes in weight loss. And we went through all of the different things to consider. Now, another thing that's really great about Weight Watchers, they have an entire team who specializes on the financial side of making sure that they get everything that they need on a PA to get your insurance to approve it, if you qualify. So if you have a VMI over 30, you've been considered obese, or you have a, a diagnostic code of obesity on your chart, uh, if you have an elevated somewhat like A1C or your A1C is starting to go up, your lipid panel looks fine because they are going to want to look at that, and your CMP, there we go, CMP panel also looks fine, then you would probably qualify. So they know how to kind of match all that together to get your insurance to approve this for you. Now through Weight Watchers, I did get them to get my insurance to approve it, where my doctor's office, they kept denying it. So I only paid $25 a month for the name brand Zepbound. It is not a compounded drug, it is the Eli Lilly drug Zepbound, and I get the entire month for $25. The other reason that I really, really like the Weight Watchers option, there is an app that you have, and I'll put it up so you guys can see. There is at the very top a messaging system that I can direct message any of my care team, my doctor, the nurses, the financial staff, anyone on my care team, any kind of questions that I have at any time. They also guided me on where to get the Eli Lilly savings card, and I will put that link down below for everyone. That is what helped me get it for $25 was applying for that Eli Lilly savings card, um, which was great. They're very knowledgeable about what they're doing. The care team also, in the process of me getting my prescription, I told them, hey, you know, sometimes it can take my pharmacy over a week to fill things. Do I need to request my next refill earlier? to give them enough time to fill it so that I don't miss a dose. That's my main concern right now. Um, they basically said I have to wait until the week three right before I take my fourth injection because on Weight Watchers, they are going to review your chart, they're gonna review your weight, they're gonna review any symptoms that you log, and yes, you will log any type of symptoms that you have, the doctor does review it, your nursing staff is going to review it. You can even put that you want the doctor to review it immediately or if you just want it to go over for her to review, him or her to review, whenever they're reviewing what your next dosage might be. Now, I did start on the 2.5 milligrams of Zepbound, which is typical. They're going to start you at the lowest dose. 
And for me personally, here are some of the side effects, okay? So I have seen everything in side effects. I'm just gonna go and say it from the nausea, the vomiting, the blurred vision, um, to stiffness, to aching, to stomach pains, to constipation. What I had, and you guys were gonna laugh, because I had to Google it when I got it to find out, is this related to this? What is this? And I did find on a Reddit forum that there are multiple other people who've had this exact same thing. It is 100% normal and okay. And it literally went away within 24 hours. So about, I'd say, I guess, 20 hours after my first Zeptide injection, which I did not live, but I did on camera with you all. It went into my left thigh and you all saw that. If you didn't, I will put the link down to that video for week one down below and you can go back and watch week one if you would like. But I woke up the next day and my whole neck and the top part of my back felt like I had slept wrong. So you know how you feel really stiff after you haven't quite slept on a pillow right and it's hard to kind of turn your head and it's sore that is what i had the very first day after i took my injection by the second day it was already gone now i am going to show you all some of the things that i did to mitigate this issue and i'm happy that i had these things so I know last week I told you all to get one of these fascia blasters. This is the smaller face one that I typically use like kind of on my jaw because I do grind my teeth at night and it will, it, oh, my jaw hurts really bad. So I also thought maybe it was something to do with that, but it's not, it's definitely the injection. You can take one of these and you can also kind of rub it down your neck like this because for me it was sore from here all the way up behind my ears and the back of my neck. So I wanted something that I could kind of just like massage down. Ultimately, what I also end up doing is I have one of these. I, it's, is it a gua sha? I'm not really sure what this rock is. I know I'm butchering it, but this is what it is. I use this on my face all the time just to kind of like rub, get the lymph node drainage, all that kind of jazz that it's supposed to do, work on like wrinkles whatever this thing is really supposed to do. I like it. I like putting this over in the freezer for a little bit and getting it cold. That was amazing to have this cold and then just start rubbing and like pushing this down back here and then also pushing down on the back of my neck. That really, really helped, especially with that being cold. So this is something that for my side effect, I had to do. Another thing that I had and I was gifted this item over a year ago on a like to know it campaign and this is from body basics now this guy you guys can see whoa, he's huge right you put it around your neck and i'm going to show you guys let's see if i can it's heavy just so you guys know it is weighted you put it around your neck and then there's magnets right here that close it kind of tight and then you see how it comes up on the neck all the way around so for me, having it come up on the neck all the way around, it heats and it's weighted and it comes all the way down to the middle of my back. So you control on a little thing right here, how much heat, how long you want it to go, all your levels, things like that. I just sat in my recliner with this and I kept it up tight around the back of my neck and my ears with the heat on anytime I was sitting down in my chair. That if I would not have had this, I don't know that I would have made it. So this is another thing that even if you have symptoms like that off of the zip bound. So if you're, if you're prone to waking up with like a, a stiff neck, you might want to grab one of those anyway. <laughs> and so today is called spilling the tea and I am going to take a sip of some of my tea. So hold on. That's another thing I will tell everyone. If you are not a tea drinker, you might want to be on this. Um, there's a lot of different types of tea. There's the chamomile teas, there's ginger's teas, there's turmeric teas. Um, I am a big fan of Vadam India teas. I did work with them, I believe in 2022 on Amazon Live, uh, talking about their process of how they are farm to Amazon warehouse. So they kind of cut out those middle suppliers and then they also give back to their farmers as well. So they make sure that their farmers' children get education, 
they're making sure that they're really giving back to them. And it is a very, very fresh tea, but I digress. The reason I say that you might wanna become a tea drinker, you do need to be drinking a ton of water on these medicines. And I mean like a ton of water, like here's my water cup, okay? Yes, all you Stanley Cup people can be haters all you want to because I do have Stanley Cups at my house. I do not use them. <laughs> this is a Brewmate. This is the Brewmate era. What I love about this, as you guys can see up here, it does have a straw, but I can lock this straw. I believe that's in the lock position. I can lock this straw so that even if I turn this upside down and it has a straw, it's not leaking. And as a mom, just wanting to toss my cup around in my car and sometimes having to drop it and run after children, that's kind of important to me. So I drink two of these a day. Now, sometimes water can get very tedious in trying to make sure that you're getting enough, right? And so for me, being able to have some decaf tea or some type of herbal tea that is also going to count towards my total water intake is huge so that's why i say if you're not a tea drinker you might want to become one because as long as it is decaf it's still going to count towards your water and honestly if you need a little bit of a pick me up just grab one that's still caffeinated as well it's not going to it's not going to hurt anybody so i am going to go over water for just a second this one does not have any flavoring in it i try to drink at least half of this without any type of flavor in it first thing in the morning uh, because i am also on Linzess. So that's probably why I did not have any type of constipation uh, when it comes to the side effects because I'm on a medicine to already prevent that because I have IBDC already. Um, so I'm staying up to with my gastroenterologist on whether or not it's working. It's so far it's been working fine. I've still been able to have movements every day and I've not had any issues. Knock on wood. So that's wonderful. As far as the water goes, for people who do not have IBDC and you might be experiencing constipation, I did talk to one of the girls that I'm friends with um, that lives down in Florida, and she said she, as long as she drinks enough water on what she is taking, which is just a GLP-1 semaglutide, um, which is not ZEP-bound, but it is similar, um, she said as long as she drinks enough water, she does not have those issues. I also want to kind of tell everybody that on these medicines, people will often ask, um, okay, so what is it doing? What is the medicine actually doing? And before I started taking it, um, I really looked at a lot of people that I used to like work out with even. So there was someone who used to be on Beachbody who was on YouTube saying like, hey, it's, it's just teaching people to eat less. So why don't we just eat less? and work out more okay in theory yes but what this has done for me in the past week and i was discussing it and trying to explain it to my husband is i don't think about food i'm not wondering what i'm going to eat next i'm not looking at something and thinking oh gosh i bet that tastes really good and like feeling like i need to have it um, a scenario is my child, my four-year-old, got into my husband's chocolate donuts and she just ripped the whole box open. So because the whole box had been ripped open, they needed to be placed over into like a stasher bag to, you know, keep them airtight, keep them fresh. Typically, if I was do in the process of moving all those donuts over into that bag, I might have one. I don't normally eat a lot of sugar. But in that process of doing one, I would be smelling them and I might think, gosh, this would be pretty good. I'm going to have one of these. Just one. It's not going to hurt. I did not think of having one. I did not crave one. I did not even want to smell it. Um, it's not that it made me nauseous smelling it. It's just I didn't want it. I didn't even think about wanting it. And when I walked away from doing it, I thought, huh, okay, that's a little different because normally I would have been like, oh, these smell so good, I wish I could have one. And that was not my reaction whatsoever. Um, I also am very busy throughout the day and I was already kind of forgetful about eating during the day. 
Um, and this has kind of made that worse. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. So this, I'm because I'm not thinking about food, I'm not worried about food, I'm not trying to smell food, I'm not thinking about what I'm gonna have for lunch because I don't really care what I'm gonna have for lunch now. Um, and it's not that I don't care what I'm gonna have for lunch because it's not good food and it's not that I it doesn't taste good. It's just, I just don't really, it, it, it takes out, one, one lady told me that it takes out the food noise for her. And I think that I'm going to agree with her on that. There's a lot of food noise in your head and we're gonna be going to Disney soon there's all kinds of food noise at Disney. And so I'm going to be very curious to see how I handle that at Disney. And if I'm even going to want those things or if I'm just going to be like, no, nah, you know, I don't really want that because I did not get any of the nausea, the dizziness, the vomiting. And in my opinion, this might not be right, but in my opinion, the reason that I did not get those things is because I do not eat anything that's fried and I do not eat anything that has sugar in it. So when I was talking to my doctor through the Weight Watchers Clinic app, she said anytime you were going to eat anything that's fried, heavy in fats, or high in sugar, it's probably going to make you nauseous. So I thought, okay, well, then I'm just not going to do those things. No big deal. I'm used to not having those things. The extent of me having something fried is my air fryer. <laughs> And it's like I take a frozen piece of fish and put it in the air fryer and I don't put anything on it. Um, other than that, I will go to Chick-fil-A maybe once or twice a month and have some nuggets. Um, but now I think I'm just going to switch over to their grilled nuggets and no big deal. One thing that a lot of people do have a lot of trouble on doing this is you do need to eat high protein. I know that it sucks, <laughs> but there's some really great ways and fun ways and tasty ways to have high protein. So for me, uh, in the Weight Watchers app at the very top in the um, where you log your food section, it breaks down and there's two main colored circles. There's actually three, but one is just water. So I'm not gonna count water. There's two main colored circles. There's the outer circle, which I believe is purple. And then there's an inner circle, which I believe is green. The green is for your fruits and vegetables. They do want you to try to get at least four servings of fruits and vegetables each day. But the main outer giant circle is how much protein they're wanting you to get on a daily basis. And I'm not sure that I know anyone that right off the bat is going to be able to meet those protein values. You have to kind of get a little, you know, fun with it. So for instance, I make a banana pudding that is high protein, okay? I'll put the ingredients up right over here because I use a lactose-free yogurt because remember, I can't have dairy, but it does have a lot of protein in it. I'm also using a sugar-free Cool Whip and Cool Whip also does not have dairy in it. Just a reminder, it's made from oil. Remember, if you want the real dairy, you gotta get stuff in the can. Um, so I use Cool Whip. I also use a sugar-free banana pudding jello mix. And then I use the tiny little Nilla wafers and I only use about four or five of the teeny tiny ones. And then I use a banana and I cut it up in slices. And I've been doing that for a while now because to me, it makes me feel like I'm having this amazing dessert, but there's really not any sugar in it. And it's high protein. I believe I get at least, I wanna say 14 grams of protein just from having this cute little dessert right here. So there's a lot of things that you can do to try to mix it up to make sure you're getting protein. Another question I'm gonna go over is people ask me along with the side effects, cause I covered that. And I covered about some of the water and I covered about sugar and fried process, right? A lot of people have asked me, have I experienced any kind of hair loss? Now I've only been on this like one week, so I'm going to say no that I have not, but I also use a lot of different products on my scalp specifically um, already. So I use this rosemary mint scalp and hair strengthening oil. I use this every week. And then each time after I shower and randomly before I go to sleep, I do use this, The Ordinary, which is a multi-peptide serum for hair density. So you can always try to go ahead and grab stuff like this to kind of 
preemptively combat any type of possible hair loss that you might experience. But no, I have not experienced any type of hair loss. That's me. Um, for me also, people have asked, what does your typical day of eating look like? Okay, so normally I'm not a huge breakfast person and I have been having to force myself to eat breakfast because I need the protein. Um, Starbucks is one of my favorite places, as are most people. You can get dairy-free, you can get sugar-free, you can get just a black coffee at Starbucks, but I also usually grab these from Starbucks. Their egg little bites that they have are high in protein if I'm going through there. That way I'm not grabbing any kind of like of their breaded items or bakery or anything like that. Um, I try to always get some type of egg sausage. Uh, if I'm not getting egg sausage, like a hot breakfast, then I have been getting out. I have a keto blend that has avocado with pineapple in it. And then I put some protein powder down in there and mix up a, a just a very small smoothie. That way I'm getting the protein in there. I also have the Orgain protein, which I do put in coffee at my house as well and mix it up and then that protein powder is almost acting like a creamer. A lot of people will also use Premier Protein, um, pouring that into like an iced coffee as well. I've seen that a lot over the years. People will mix in, you know, things like MCT oil uh, and that I will talk about what I use for a sweetener now. So as you heard, my doctor did tell me that anytime you do eat any kind of sugar, it is likely going to have you nauseous, possibly vomiting. So I don't typically use sugar at my house anyway. I do use this from Wholesome Yum. This is an allulose, a crystallized allulose. This is probably my favorite. Um, allulose on the glycemic index is pretty low for spiking your glycemic index. And so it has a minimal effect there. Um, and what's really great about Wholesome Yum, just so that you guys know, they also make some really great allulose syrups, like maple syrups, and they're honey. So this is probably the best sugar-free honey that I have found anywhere. And so those are what I use like in my tea, in my coffee, anytime I'm making something that I want it to just have a little bit of sweetness to it, those are the things that I add to it. I additionally, to my giant waters, which, Need a sip to my giant waters. I will also typically add some of these type things. Um, I do have, this is from Redmond Real Salt. These are called Relight. And then I also have the Ultima water replenishers as well. Now these are electrolyte blends that you're gonna be putting down in your water um, because a lot of times when you're not really remembering to eat or you're really changing up the way that you're eating into eating more protein, like I did on Carnival or in the keto diet that I was on, um, you get those keto flu-like symptoms because your body is kind of deprived of some of these essential electrolytes that you need. And so um, even when I'm sick, the grape Ultima and the like, there's like a blue raspberry Ultima, I crave it when I'm sick. And so these specifically, they, they have zero sugar, zero calories and zero carbs, just so that you guys know. Um, but I will put up over here on the side kind of what all you're getting in the Ultima packets. And then also on this side, I'll put what you're getting in these Redmond Real Salt packets. Now, Redmond Real Salt, I will put down below. I do have a code, Ketosis Mom, that you guys can use to get percentage off of Redmond Real Salt. And I use Redmond's actual real salt on everything that I cook, um, bake, whatever in the kitchen. Uh, already and so that's big for me. Um, a lot of other people don't like to mix things in their water and so Keto Chow, you can also use a code Ketosis Mom to save at Keto Chow. They have something that's called Daily Minerals that you can put a couple of drops into whatever you're drinking as well as they have electrolyte tablets that you can take. So if you would rather just take a tablet and use some minerals instead of putting flavor in a giant water and drinking it, you can do that as well. Um, a lot of my other friends that are on this, they like these Armora packets. They come in multiple different flavors now. These are also really great in my opinion um, for me because I have an autoimmune disease. These, these are immune support as well. 
And so I will drink these on occasion as well. So as far as kind of combating some of the side effects, there's where all that is. As far as why I chose Weight Watchers, I think it's pretty obvious. I get my own doctor, I get my care team that I get to DM whenever I want to. They have a whole financial team that is willing to work with you on trying to get your prior authorization approved as well as what you're having to pay. So even if they can't get your insurance to approve it right off the bat, then they can start trying to look for some of the options that are gonna be the best pricing for you of like, okay, where can we get this and how can we get it that's going to be at a minimal cost on your end. So that's a lot of expertise that you're getting. Now there is a monthly fee for Weight Watchers, but in my mind, I'm also getting the Weight Watchers app to log all of my food, to log my weight, to talk directly to the care team whenever I want to. And so for me, that monthly fee that I'm paying there is bounds above and beyond worth the excess money that I would be paying for just getting like a compound drug on my hands as opposed to having all of this over here. It's like name brand drug, financial team, a whole care team, a clinician on demand. You can virtually visit. You don't have to go into offices. You can log your weight. You can ask them questions whenever you want to. You can log all your food. And yes, unlike my fitness pal now, because I used to use my fitness pal and I loved it, but they took away the barcode scanner and you have to pay for the barcode scanner now. Weight Watchers app that they gave me as part of this clinic program, I can still use the barcode scanner. So if I'm going to scan, you know, the Greek yogurt that I'm using or whatever kind of yogurt I'm using to make my banana pudding, I can just go scan the barcode instead of trying to search and find it and type it all in. And to me, like the time saving of that is amazing. So now I'm gonna get into what were my results over the past week. And for that, I'm gonna have to get my phone. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of tea while I look this up for you guys, because today is about spilling the tea, right? All right, let me find my my um, scale app. Now, last time I did tell you guys that I used Renfro. I do recommend it, because it's going to give you all these same things as well. Mm. Okay, so everyone knows, I'm gonna go through each section. I'm gonna go through the trends. So I have lost in one week, 5.8 pounds, 5.8 pounds. And the only thing that I have done differently, and I mean the only thing, is I have ate more. I ate more and I lost weight. Now I will say we did go for a walk two of those days. So, and I will tell you that for me, that's the best form of exercise. So get yourself some good walking shoes and I'll put some of my favorites down below um, just because I am getting ready to go to Disney as well. And so I need to make sure I had those good to go and I'm able to get out and walk. So we did go for a walk, I think twice um, this week. But other than that, I ate more and I lost 5.8 pounds. So the theory that my old favorite like beach body person had on YouTube of like, oh, we just need to teach people to eat less and then they'll lose weight. I'm not going to support that whatsoever because I have been forcing myself to eat and forcing myself to eat things that are on my FODMAP for SIBO. So it's going along with what I should be having, but then I've really been pushing myself because at the end of the night, I'm usually sitting there going, ah, I didn't get enough protein today. What am I going to do? And that's when I'll typically go grab one of those banana pudding things that I made that's high protein or I'll mix up a little protein shake or I'll go get some little of the meat snacks that I really like. Um, or I'll just tell my husband, hey, like, can you go scramble me an egg? Like, I, I don't know. I need, I need more food. I need more protein. And I don't really want to eat. I don't, I don't want to eat it. I just know that I need to eat it. Um, and so I've lost 5.8 pounds. Now, my BMI also went down. My BMI went down by almost one whole percent. Yeah, one almost one whole percent it went down. Um, my body fat also went down by, let's see, almost 2%. My body fat went down in the past week by almost 2% body fat. It also goes through and tells me my subcutaneous fat went down by 
two as well. My visceral fat went down by one. Uh, and my body water went up. So that's, that's interesting. So my body water went up. My visceral, my subcutaneous, and my fat percentages went down. And my weight went down. And so for me, having something like this that you can, and I'll put this up on the screen, that you can scroll through and see all these different things and trend them for yourself. Because here's the thing. If I would have seen that I had lost muscle and only a little bit of fat, that I'm going to say, oh my gosh, I need to start really walking more, lifting weights, making sure I'm eating that protein. The way that you're not going to lose the muscle and you're going to lose the fat doing this is by working out, lifting, walking, getting on a bike, making sure you have some type of weights that you're doing. I don't care if it's two pounds that you're lifting. You weren't lifting two pounds in your arms before. And I used to date someone, this is a true story, in my 20s, that he would sit at his desk with a little like five pound dumbbell and he would just lift his little five pound dumbbell at work. He had arms that looked amazing. So don't think that just because it's a small weight that you're doing, you put some two pound weights in your arms or you put some wristlets on. I have some really great Tony bands that I will tag down below that you can put on your arms while you're walking. Don't think that adding that, that little weight is not doing anything because it will. So eat your protein so that you don't lose muscle and that you lose the fat. So, so far my first week on just 2.5 milligrams of Zetbound has been phenomenal. Like I am beyond happy with this. I'm eating more. I'm having to force feed myself to eat, <laughs> like literally force feed myself to eat. Um, and I'm losing weight. So there's obviously something throughout this process that is definitely working, obviously. Um, and so I'm gonna keep going. Now I'm gonna keep on the 2.5 for the entire first month. When I get towards the end of the first month, I will discuss with my physician through the Weight Watchers app, whether or not I feel like I could bump up or, or if I wanna stay where I am. Just know that they did tell me that any type of side effects that you have when you first start taking the medicine, when you bump up to the next level, that those side effects might return again at while your body gets used to the new dosage. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go grab my second dosage and I'm going to inject today on the back of my arm. Now typically they do say that you need someone else to do this for you. However, I am actually really good at this. I have injections monthly for an autoimmune disease that I've been doing for a while. I'm used to doing this. So you will probably wanna have someone help you do it on the back of your arm back here. I'm capable of doing it myself because I've had to multiple times now. Um, today, I am taking it straight out of the fridge so that it is still cold. And I will tell you guys if it does sting or not, uh, because I, that was the reason that I had it come to room temperature last time, but I did not feel it go in at all last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and go get my cold pack to put back here, my alcohol wipe and my injection, and I'll be right back. So let's keep spilling the tea. We are back. This is straight out of the fridge. This is my Zetbound 2.5. I have my nice cool pack that I've had back here, kind of towards the back of my arm for a little bit now, just holding it there to get it nice and cold. This is my personal preference that I like when I'm injecting. I do like to kind of ice the area. Some people don't do that to each their own. Everyone's gonna be different. You're also gonna wanna take your alcohol wipe. Make sure that you thoroughly clean the area. So I'm just gonna kinda do this whole area over here. There we go. All over there. You guys can see where it's kinda red back here, right? That's, that's how I know that I'm going in the right place. It's cold and it's red. You do wanna make sure that that's completely dry before you continue. With the Zetbound, there is the push at the top that is purple. There is the gray bottom. You are gonna wanna twist and kinda take this gray bottom off, you're gonna pull. It's a little hard, so just know that. Then down inside there, you guys are gonna see that there is a needle down in there. That is what's going to go straight in and inject. So if you do not like watching injections, then you can kind of skip ahead in the chapters right now. 
because I'm about to do this one. And again, you do want to fully inspect it. Make sure that you don't see any type of particulate in there. A bubble is perfectly fine. Remember, I used to work in pharma uh, manufacturing. And so here's my red spot right here. I'm gonna unlock it. Make sure that it's unlocked because I, yeah, make sure it's unlocked. Then you're going to go back here. You see my red spot right here. I'm going to place the end down right here on this red section. And then all you do is you hit the button. Make sure that you're holding it tight. Boom, you're gonna listen for the second one, second one, then you're going to slowly remove. And then if there's anything to wipe away, just go ahead and boop, boop, boop. And now that is my second week injection. And I'm gonna leave this right here. We're done. So week two is now in the books. I can't wait to come back and update you guys on week three of how things are going. I will let you guys know if those same side effects that I had last week with the neck come back after doing another injection this week, or if I don't have those this week at all, I will be interested to see that myself even. Um, I will say what's interesting enough is on yesterday, the day before my injection, I did feel like maybe some of the effects of the drug were wearing off just slightly because then yesterday I found myself thinking about what am I going to have for dinner and I had not done that the entire rest of the week earlier so that I may be wrong but make sure that you're taking it on the same day at the same time um, don't take it early you know it does have instructions on if you are taking it late you can't take it so many days late before having to just skip a dose um, so just make sure that you're following the drug guidelines with whatever brand or whatever type you are taking. You will want to, I'm going to lock this back. You will want to then put this into a sharps container for disposal. Um, I always put my lid back on the end just so that you guys see that. Other than that, the only questions that I've really had from people are about cost, which I covered before. Uh, I cannot do any type of quotes for cost. Weight Watchers is not going to be able to do any type of quotes for cost for you either until they really get into it and you've already kind of started and gone through the process. Um, and so that's not really something that they're going to like be able to give you an estimate up front on or anything like that. Um, and because I did inject in a different site this time, I will let you know if I do have any type of side effects in my arm and my leg. I did not. I did not have any type of rash. I did not have any kind of soreness. You could not even see where I had done the injection, um, which is great. So thank you for joining me for spilling the tea today. And I will be back next week on my week three to go over everything with you all then as well. Now, one thing that I will tell you all before I go is that if you are starting to walk more and you start experiencing what I have, which is plantar fasciitis, then I do have something that you guys should look into. This was also gifted to me through a Like to Know It campaign, but I cannot be happier that they, get, they gave it to me. This is from Alleviate Therapy and they have multiple different things. Like this is a foot massager. And then this is a foot brace that you can put on that will immediately help that plantar fasciitis. For me, it does anyway. And so also massaging with this after you've gone walking is huge. And so because I'm doing this, I haven't really needed this that much, but each time I go walking, I do make sure that I use this little massager right here from Alleviate Therapy. I'll put a link for them down below as well. They have things for tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, things like that. But when you're starting to do things new again, you know, if you're not used to walking and you have added some weight to yourself, you might have things like plantar fasciitis pop up on you. And that doesn't mean that you need to stop walking. It means that you need to figure out how to work with your foot pain that you have. So I will see you guys next time. Again, I will see you week three. We will inject at the exact same time and I will give you guys all of the updates 
from my week two and any kind of symptoms. If you all have any questions, make sure that you comment them down below. You can also find me on social media at Ketosis Mom. I'm also on Like to Know It under at Living Large and Lily. I'm also on Instagram at Living Large and Lily as well. So that's for more fashion based and then Ketosis Mom is for more things like this. You know, diet, what, how I'm getting my protein in, you know, what's going on with my kids, things like that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure that you tap the subscribe and that little bell button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye y'all.